We're going to do what Carl never did. We're going to sort this out. What can I do for you today? I guess I'm just feeling a bit down. I had a beautiful family. So how could he decide that we weren't worth living for? This is really happening, isn't it? Sebastian's really coming home. To our healthy little family. Opening up isn't easy. Look, look I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't make it today, all right? You can't keep cancelling our therapy sessions. I can't believe it. All those months, all those no. endless, sleepless nights of worrying now. No. Here we are. We can finally start putting everything that's happened behind us. Oh, I forgot the gal and gal. We meant to know what that is. It's a root. Uh, I'm making a cauliflower Thai curry to celebrate Sebastian coming home. Right, I need to go back to the shop. Uh, I'll come with you. I need to sort out the love boat rotors. Mm -hmm. See you later. Right, come on, you two. It's bath time. <laughs> Warren, you have been avoiding talking about what happened all day. Because there's nothing to talk about. We kissed. Oh, we just got caught up in the moment. Yeah, but I still have to tell Brody. She won't eat. She can't get to talk. She doesn't want to get out of bed. And she says she's not going to the funeral. I better talk to her. Right. Well, I'll pop her into your place and let Mandy know what's happening. to say goodbye to Kyle. Get out. No. Not until you tell me why you're not coming. Because it's my fault that he's dead. I'll be right before I even finish the story. You can't tell Brody. I have to. Do you still have feelings for me? What? No. Not like that. Well, there you go, then. The kiss didn't mean anything. So why risk everything over a stupid mistake? Hey, you're staying for Lips Curry, right? Uh, Warren was just saying how tired he is. You know what? I'll probably get a second win, though. We are celebrating, after all. I'll crack open the bubble here. You are going to ruin your whole life. I can't do it, Darren. I can't face all those people knowing that they're blaming me. No one's blaming you. You didn't hear Tony. He's not been the same since the operation. You know, whatever he said, he, he won't have meant. It doesn't matter, he was still right. And maybe if I'd been more attentive, 
I'd been there more when Carl needed me. Kyle was lucky to have you. Okay. You know, when I think about all the things that I put him through and the miscarriage. There's nothing you could have done about that. But I knew how devastated he was afterwards, and I, I just got angry with him. I, I felt like his grief was just one more thing that I had to deal with. You know, I told him that maybe losing the baby was just fate. Yeah, you were grieving too. And then I made the decision that we weren't going to try again. And yeah. He supported me, of course he did, because he's kind and he loves me and... through things, it doesn't mean that they... You can't start analysing every tiny little thing. These aren't tiny little things, though, are they? Can you imagine what it must have felt like to find out that we slept together? Because I can. You know, all those months of me up on my high horse about you and Mandy, and then I go and do exactly the same. find ways of blaming ourselves. No, I postponed the wedding. I turned a blind eye to his weed smoking. I kicked him out of this house. So whatever you can come up with, Darren, I guarantee that I can go one better. I put the idea in his head in the first place. What? I told him I was thinking about it. About what? No. A few weeks ago, it all just got too much. And he found me up on a roof. He managed to talk some sense into me. He made me realise that the thoughts I was having would pass. Same for him. You told me that he tried it before. So it wasn't you. Those thoughts would have always been in the back of his mind. And my job to make sure that they stayed there. Depression doesn't work like that. Does Mandy know how bad it got? Only Luke knows. I couldn't even bear to tell the therapist. I can't keep this a secret. Kyle never told me how bad his depression was, and look what happened. You need to talk to Mandy. Yeah, I will. When? I'll do it tonight. Darren, because if you don't, I will. You know, some people say Galangal has anti-inflammatory properties. So, not only does it taste great, but could potentially help clear up a rash. Oh, you don't get that with fish and chips. <sighs> Brody. What's this? Oh, it was meant to be a surprise for after dinner. Didn't go the love boat earlier. I had to collect this. I had it made for Sebastian and Sophie. And bump too. I wanted them to know that even though our setup might not be the most conventional, it's even more special because of that. Instead of two parents that love them, they get a whole team. Brody. It's partly the onions, but that is so lovely. Yeah. It really is, mate. So do you like it? I love it. And I love you. Hey. Um, 
Jack fill me in on the Nancy situation. Yeah, we've bumped into Mandy on the way over. Oh, are you all dressed up? Uh, hello. Oh, it's your birthday. Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry. We were supposed to have reservations at Pickle of Festa. They do this white chocolate raspberry swirl cheesecake this thick. Yeah, we can rebook. It's more important we look after our mate. I'll try and talk to her. But no, um, she's still angry. You know, you two like, you probably set her off again. All right, well, we'll try. Come on. Uh, maybe you should go in on your own first. Come on. Fancy. Oof, it's a bit stuffy in here. Oh, I the curtains. Leave it. We just wanted to check, see how you're doing. We all feel like we missed the signs with Carl. Look, you have more important things to worry about right now. You should be out enjoying yourself. Oh, well, funny you should say that. It is actually my birthday and we've got reservations at Piccola Festa. They do the most amazing white chocolate. But obviously, we wanted to be here for you instead, so... The Tony, Darren and I sat at the hutch with Kyle. It was a few months ago. We had a heart-to-heart, -heart, but he never mentioned anything about how he was feeling. Yeah, and I am usually very astute to other people's feelings, and I didn't sense anything. Are you joking? You are literally the most self-absorbed person I have ever met. I mean, you wouldn't know that Kyle was depressed, even if he was wearing a T-shirt that said, I am depressed, unless maybe he happened to walk past a mirror that you were looking at yourself in. But do you know what? It doesn't matter, because he wasn't your responsibility. He was mine. I lived with him. I slept next to him every single night, and I'm the one that missed it. <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> maybe you're the second most self-absorbed person that I know. Look, maybe you'd feel better if you just got up and had some food. He's dead, Luke. My partner is dead. And so you know, me having something to eat or getting out of this bed or going to his funeral is not going to make me feel any better. And nothing that you two can say is going to make me feel any different. So please, please, just save your breath. I wish I had this many people looking out for me when I was growing up. Things could have been very different. Never really talk about your childhood. Yeah. That's because there aren't very many happy memories to reminisce about. If it's difficult, you don't have to. That smell reminded me a lot of being a kid. Curry. Yeah. There was this restaurant near the home that me, Katie and Spencer used to live at for a while. The kitchen, it was right underneath our bedroom. I'd broke my leg and I was laid up in bed for a few weeks. <laughs> and all I could smell was the curries cooking. <laughs> my stomach was growling like mad. And what was it like? The home? <sighs> it had the potential to be great. The guy that ran it, Cormac, <laughs> he was a top bloke. When he had some spare time, he used to teach me how to box, but he was a busy man and well, he wasn't there very much. He was this older kid. He used to put himself in charge. He used to pick on everyone. But for some reason, he used to live for making my life a misery. At Christmas, the people, they, they sent him presents. And our Katie, she got this doll. It was only a bit of cheap tap, but she loved it. And this lad, he could see how happy it made her. So when she went to bed that night, that doll's burnout head was on a pillow. That's awful. What did you do? I, um, I saw him at the top of the steps. He was bragging to all the other kids about what he'd done. So I puffed out my chest. And I said in my, uh, 
In my toughest voice. You mess with my sister and you mess with me. And did it work? Yeah. I mean, I could see the fear in his eyes for a split second. <laughs> and then he pushed me down the steps and I spent the rest of Christmas laid up in bed. Smelling those curries cooking. <laughs> did you ever try and track him down? That boy? I don't need to. He's living next door at the Devros. What? That Felix guy? Well, this is fate then, Warren. You should have it out with him and tell him how he's affected you. I did my explaining a few weeks ago. Is this the bloke Sienna says you punched, right? Let me guess. Didn't make you feel better, even a tiny bit. Uh, I'll go. Nancy said that us two will be able to get through to her, and she's right. But you think I can? Well, she's going through the stages of grief. After shock and denial comes guilt. And if we want her at that funeral tomorrow, we need to get to talk through how she's feeling, get it all out. And when Dirt died, everyone and his mother bought me a self-help book. What comes after guilt? According to the books, anger. And that's where I come in. No one winds Nancy up more than you do. It'll be like waving a red rag to a bull. You're the rag. Okay. Mandy. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm just hanging this up properly because you'll need it tomorrow. For the last time, I'm not going. Nancy. No, I don't want to hear it again. And especially not from you. And why are you all still in my house? Because we all care about you. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. You know, just because we've been more polite to each other lately, it doesn't make us mates. No. We're more than mates. Because the kids connect us whether you like it or not. And we are all in this with you. <laughs> no one is in this with me. <laughs> Seriously, Mandy, the nerve of you coming in here and and acting like you've ever given me a second thought. You know, if you'd never come back, me and Darren, we'd probably still be together, and me and Kyle would never have happened, and I wouldn't be feeling like this. You know, I've always been a little bit scared of you. You might be short, but you've got the composure of a much taller person. Lying there, wallowing in self-pity, suddenly you're not that formidable. Excuse me? Clearly you're not in the right frame of mind for a grown-up conversation. How dare you! You callous, cold-hearted, self-possessed tramp! Do you all want to hear something sad? You know, I mean, truly pathetic. I honestly thought that the universe sent me Kyle as some kind of reward for what you two put me through. You know, the sneaking around behind my back, the, the meeting up for this sordid affair. And what was I doing? Oh, just carrying on, oblivious! You know, working my way through the washing, trying to get teenagers interested in Jane Eyre, making fish fingers for the kids' tea and just pottering through my normal, dull, happy life. And do you know what the real kicker is? When you get found out, the shine is supposed to wear off, but does it for you too? No, it doesn't. You just settle down as if it was always meant to be. And I thought, I thought I could, I could never love again. And then I found Kyle. And I tricked myself into thinking that he wouldn't leave me too. <gasps> you never even had an inkling we were together, did you? Mandy. <laughs> Mandy, kick a girl when you stand. <laughs> yeah, but it's true, right? You had no idea whatsoever. Well, of course I didn't, because on top of everything else, apparently I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, you're not. We just hid it really well. We did everything we could. We went out of our way to, to cover our tracks and to keep it from you. Just like Kyle did with his depression. <laughs> She's right. How could you have possibly known that he needed help? We did such a good job of making you think it was okay. 
He didn't want you to know how bad it was. He didn't want anyone to know. Ponty, this isn't your fault. <laughs> One thing you can be certain of is that he loved you so much. <laughs> it's true. I could never have hidden that from you. <laughs> <laughs> a toast to Lib for cooking something that actually looks and smells edible. <laughs> From the man who thinks her is fine dining, I'll take it. Mm. Uh, and to good friends. Uh -oh. To family. 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 You're right. Nancy said some pretty horrible things. <laughs> I'll get over it. I'm just glad she's up and about. I could have really backfired, but it turns out Cindy has some pretty good instincts. <laughs> hey. How are you feeling? Better. You're trying to make me angry on purpose, weren't you? Actually, that was my idea. We just wanted to get you up. Well, it worked. Sorry I called you all those names. Well, I called you short, so I guess we're even. <laughs> I really appreciate you all being here, despite how many times I asked you to leave. Well, you'd have ignored us too. About the funeral, Nance? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I need to say goodbye. And although I don't think I'll ever stop feeling guilty, I know now that Maybe Kyle not telling me was his way of trying to protect me. He was wrong, though. Maybe if he'd told me the truth, things would have been different. Bless. Oh, it looks like he doesn't have a care in the world. Mm. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. Oh, the state of me. Oh, am I going to get through tomorrow? Oh, you'll be okay. Mwah. We'll be there for you. Yeah. We always will. Pregnancy cravings. I'm just reading. <laughs> <laughs>